is a group of global business leaders that have come together uh, in a common belief that the future should be about business being a force for social, environmental and economic benefit. So right at the moment the B team is brand new, it's just forming itself and we're looking at what will be those very key areas to begin our work in. And I think, you know, very much looking for what's the value add of a group like this. There's a million groups, we don't all need new organizations, but what could they bring to bear? given their profiles, given their personalities, given their interests, to try and move the needle from where we are to something very, very different. Yes, well, um, we don't want to deal just with, just with money. Some of it is about hearts and minds, just people understanding more deeply or feeling more deeply that they have something to lose. It's been very easy to focus around money that is the easiest thing. You have a number and it goes up or down and that tells you whether you're okay or not okay. It's much more difficult for an individual person to think, is the world I live in okay or not okay? Are the people around me okay or not okay? Because there's not a single metric for that. And that's been something that our entire economic system drove people into. So we're, you know, our, our thought around it is that we have to broaden people's understanding of those other things and in some ways make it simpler for them to see because if it's all too complicated we know that as humans we just tend to push that away. And you know we see the environmental profit and loss account as a tool. We don't try and tell everyone it's the solution, it's the this, it's the that. It's a tool to help your understanding, to help the transparency that you can then see deeper. It's like looking below you know, in murky water and being able to now understand what's under that water. And I think that it definitely serves that purpose. And as I was um, pointing out in my talk, it's just gone so far beyond that in its value. So whereas we started out to use it as a tool to communicate something, it's actually ended up being a tool to manage businesses. And I think that that is a, a big breakthrough. Well, I can speak you know, both inside and outside the company. So inside the company, um, I think it meets with everything that happens in every company about every new idea. So first you get a whole round of, of skepticism and people say, oh, this has resource implications. And then you get a whole round of, you know, investigation, people that are innovating and thinking, mm, maybe I should open my mind to that a little bit more. So you get that whole wave of people that comes in saying, well, I mean, this could be kind of interesting. And then you get the people who are really like, this is changing my life and my perspective. And better than that is changing how I can do better at my job in this business. So I think that it's, it has a major opportunity to make a lot of changes. Does it give any uh, um, business opportunities, so to say? Does it give a, an edge for the business itself? I think it gives a couple of business opportunities, really. So if you think about an EP&L result, if that is out there publicly, um, and you see that there's a heavy footprint somewhere along the line, and you're starting another company, you go out there and say, oh my God, you know, from that perspective of an external provider, supplier, you could start new businesses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to offer you something. Inside the business, it starts you thinking, okay, so I know my competitor doesn't know this about that. Unless they've done an EP&L, they probably don't know this. So I know this now. So now I'm going to start moving things around. And I'm going to see whether I can change the sourcing locations. But you know why you're changing the sourcing location. So someone else might be doing it on the basis of labor becoming too expensive. But you might be doing it on the basis of you're growing cotton in a water-scarce place. Now you need to move the hat to a place that's not as damaging as that. So I think it starts everyone in the supply chain thinking, what's my role in that and how can I improve the situation? So whether you're in finance, procurement, sustainability, you're all looking at what role can I play? And I think that companies, well, I know that companies have clearly found that there's an advantage in there. And um, that makes them sometimes probably reticent to, you know, share right out there what their results are. it would probably be something to do with the things that, that the biggest consumers in the world are most associated with, whatever that is, you know, I'm 
without saying it probably has to do with the dependence on, on the fossil fuel economy, which is an addiction, would be whatever we have to do to break free from that. So it probably won't be a single innovation. It'll be many innovations, and it won't just be finding renewables. It'll be the lifestyles that are enabled through those so that people do not feel that they've lost an entitlement. I think that, that, that any innovation you have, you have to make people feel that they gained something, not that they lost. And I think, I don't know exactly what it'll be, but I believe it's out there and I believe we're moving towards it and um, I believe we have to move towards it quickly.